All right, so here we have Yvonne laying down here on the table. Um, so Yvonne has an overactive masseter. That's the um, muscle that a lot of times, you know, you see people massaging just kind of through here. So the two main muscles that people focus on generally in TMJ are the temporalis, which is just kind of here, that area that feels really nice around your temples mm -hmm. and your eyes. And then right in front of your ears and down your jaw is your masseter. Now that's a really huge muscle. Um, and when you're clenching, when you're chewing a lot, you're grinding, this muscle gets really, really involved. But there's also all these other muscles, your buccinator, your pterygoids. Those are muscles that are more in the mouth. Um, and then you also have the muscles around your neck and even into your pecs that are involved and active when you have a dysfunction through your TMJ. So um, when I started with Yvonne, I would be doing what pretty much everyone uh, does when you will see some kind of TMJ or jaw massage, which is just working through the outside of the jaw and then through the temporalis, but that wasn't helping in 100% uh, entirely. And so I started doing more research. So what you'll see today is a full session. Now, as you know, I have the theory of unwinding the knot. So I always start from the area furthest away that I'm going to address and work toward the area that I'm focusing on. And TMJ is no different. So I always start down through the pecs. There's an area just under your collarbones called your subclavicular fossa. And that's really where a lot of your neck muscles and your pec muscles all attach. This can get really tight when you have uh, TMJD, temporomandibular joint dysfunction, um, which means, you know, you're in pain, you have headaches, you grind, you clench. This can get really tight. You can get something called upper cross syndrome. So I start here and then I'll move my way up the neck to the outside and then to the inside. And you'll see all of that today. So one of the things that I think a lot of people don't really think about is that where you feel it is not always where it comes from. So Yvonne has a lot of tension through her shoulders. She has forward shoulder um, posture. Everything kind of rounds in. It's called pronation, just rounding forward. And I'm just gonna start to work there. And if you notice, as I press down her shoulder, you can see how her head moves and that's from tension through her neck. Now remember if this isn't functioning properly then you'll start to see um, different types of movement through the jaw. And as I start to uh, soften I'll go back and do that again and what you should see is a difference in the way that her neck moves. Um, now a lot of times I'll do this dry, meaning I won't use any kind of oil, um, but I do supplement with it. I just don't go to it automatically. It kind of bothers me when people do that because you can use the skin, as you can see here. I'm kind of using the skin and moving it back and forth. If I have oil, I just slide against the skin, and sometimes I can't pin the muscles the way I'd really like to. So I'm working through her scalenes. Now her scalenes, there's three of them. You can kind of just follow my fingers and they move all the way up and behind. Now, if you have TMJ, you'll find that this area, if you go ahead and feel that on yourself, is incredibly tight. And releasing those neck muscles can feel amazing through the whole jaw, just around the whole area. So I'll go from side to side, and I'm looking to see which side feels tighter to me. Uh, the right side definitely feels tighter, so I'm just gonna support her head and start to move down. So at this point, I do feel like I need a little slick, so I'm gonna go ahead and use some oil. I'm using um, our Nourish Massage Oil has some geranium and rose, a little neroli. Um, and this is really, really nice 
before the neck. It can help with pain, but it also helps release some uh, tension in the muscles. It can also help to detox some of the lymphs. There's a lot of lymph glands through the neck. So it's kind of a twofer. You get some lymphatic drainage as well in here. So I'm just drawing down through the scalenes. And so I'm going from anterior to posterior. That just means I'm going from the front to the back. And this is all to prepare the neck and temporomandibular joint to be released. You know, you kind of think of it like we often think of our muscles in a vacuum. And I kind of feel like we think about our muscles in a vacuum because of the way we experience the anatomy when we're taught it, right? So we learn about muscles and anatomy through dissection. And dissection literally means to cut apart. And so when the body operates as a system, you really can't distinguish between muscles when you're moving, right? So the body to move your neck or your shoulder or even your jaw, you don't just use one or two muscles, you use full systems. Um, and some of those systems move, you know, pretty far away. Um, and you can actually see that in some of the things that TMJ is correlated with, like lower back pain. So the spine uses all of these muscles that affect the way the head and jaw sit on the top of your spine. And anything along that, including your hips, can really affect the way your jaw um, feels. And your jaw can also affect how other things in your body feel. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and see here. And so you'll start to see that there's a little bit of change in the way that her head responds to this. I'd like to see even more change but um, right now I'm just gonna work on the other side and keep going. So there's this concept of like balancing someone out. Um, and a lot of times if you go in for a massage, you kind of experience that where if they do five minutes on one side, they'll do the same five minutes on the other side. Um, but that doesn't make any sense because if you have something that's out of alignment, say it's five degrees out of alignment, well, if you move both sides five degrees, then this is just 10 degrees out of alignment with five degrees over here. So you need to shift, right? So if you have five degrees off on one side to balance out, you would need to address the degrees on one side versus the other, not doing the exact same thing. So you'll see that I don't do the exact same stuff on either side, and that's on purpose. That's not carelessness. <laughs> that's me actually addressing specifically what's going on for Avon. So you'll see I'm drawing backwards here on this side where I didn't on the other. Um, and that's just because her sternocleidomastoid um, is a little bit tighter on this side, which often happens when you have posterior scalene tension on the right side, you'll get a sternocleidomastoid, just this muscle here that draws through here, will be tight. Um, and again, that's because of that tug of war around the neck. So I'm pinching on her right trapezius, and then I'm just drawing up through that anterior scalene omohyoid, SCM, sternocleidomastoid. And that's really to, to start to balance her out. And now I just go under and I'm gonna get her suboccipital lobes. Now the suboccipital lobes, when they are tight, will actually push your head forward kind of like that. And when that happens, often the jaw will jut forward and you can get impacted teeth, 
nerve issues, headaches. Um, in fact, the suboccipital lobe is considered the phantom headache muscle. And I'm just doing some, com uh, just some compression through the actual muscle and then decompression through the spine. So I'm pressing up and back. Um, if you would like to see how that's done for yourself, go ahead and check out a self-massage video for this suboccipital lobe. There's some really great releases that you can do on your own that are quite effective. So I really like to take some time here and uh, Ivana, if you'll just open and close your jaw for me, just give me a couple little large slow chews. And what I'm doing is I'm actually looking to see if she uses her suboccipital lobe. And what that would look like is her head would do this while she's chewing. Now she doesn't do that because we've talked about it. I've educated her on it. But when we first began, it is something that she would do. I'm just doing a little traction here through the cervical spine, pushing up and pulling back. And now I'm going to deepen that a little bit more, doing a stretch. Now a lot of people like to do a stretch this way. I find that it's way more effective to actually get the scalenes, all of these anterior muscles that are a little bit harder to address when you actually turn the head backwards and toward the shoulder. I'll do that again. Oof, Yvonne. Your neck is so tight, girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. If you like watching Yvonne get massaged, I actually have a two hour massage video you can follow the link uh, to see that. Yvonne actually meows in that, boat, in that video. I do. You do, it's super cute. You go meow. <laughs> I was like in your hip or something. <laughs> You're like meow. We actually, in the video, we put a little like, um, like a little, <laughs> like over. Or yeah, like a little, word yeah. <laughs> coming word from your cut. face, mm. which I think was actually like covered with a sheet or something at that point because it was so bright in the room. All right, so now I'm just testing to see a uh, range of motion. I'm compressing down in her suboccipital on the left side and on the right side, I'm actually on her medial scalene. Um, there's a relationship here that I would like to soften so that's why I'm just starting to compress in those areas and move back and forth. And I definitely still feel a lot of tension through her scalenes on the right side. So I'm gonna just go ahead and start to release those. All right, so I'm just shortening the scalene a little bit so you can see the way her head is positioned is to actually shorten the muscle. Um, and that gives me a little bit more slack to move it around and get it released. And then if I want to lengthen it, I can do this. And I'm actually starting to see a little bit of movement there. Just press your face into my arm here. Good. And relax. All right. Let's do that again. 
and press your hand. There we go. And relax. And I'm going to extend a little bit more. We're right at the end range here. And go ahead and press again. And for some reason, this actually really makes a difference in how the muscle itself lengthens. Relax. It stimulates what's called a Golgi end organ. And press again. So I'm pressing her head with my right hand and I'm pressing down into her shoulder with my left hand and relax, good. She probably got a nice deep stretch with that. Oh, that actually feels a lot better. Good, 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 good. So, it's gonna work through scalenes here. All the way down. Yeah, you need it. So remember that muscles, they don't just like stop randomly before a joint. They always go over the joint. That's how movement is created. You can think of any kind of cantilever um, or like those big cranes and how they move. You know, you have to have it crossing a junction to be able to open and close that junction. We don't think about it that way because the parts of the muscular system that cross those junctions are not vascular. They're tendons and ligaments, things like that. And so I'm just completing um, that line from the scalenes onto the pecs. And just getting that lateral border of the pec major into the pec minor a little bit. And so all of this is, is actually, again, for her TMJ. Um, it's a little bit frustrating when I watch, I know. It's a little bit frustrating when I watch like other TMJ videos and everyone just focuses on the jaw. I know that's how people experience their discomfort, but it's an incomplete session. And um, I think that's why, you know, a lot of times you don't see a ton of progress. This is a way to really start to create progress toward feeling better. Of course, just like anything, you know, massage is something that has to be maintained. It has to be done regularly. You know, no one goes to the gym and says, well, I went to the gym, you know, six months ago. I don't know why I don't have abs. I went to the gym once six months ago. Um, everyone understands that to, you know, have a really strong body, you have to work it out. No one says, hey, I, I showered three weeks ago. I don't know why I smell now. <laughs> it's just something that happens. You know that you need to shower regularly uh, if you want to eliminate your body odor. So, you know, uh, I could go on with a million examples, but massage is that same kind of thing where if you don't get massage regularly, your body's going to be stiff. It's just kind of how it works. So now I'm up in the temporalis here, moving back and forth. So I just kind of go in. So you can think of it like a 45 degree angle. I'm in the hairline and I'm going up towards the forehead and then down towards the ear. And I'm looking for anything that's kind of tight and clicky, right? Um, so if you clench, this will feel kind of crunchy like little rubber bands underneath the head. And now I'm gonna come up into the kind of parietal lobe here, and I'm just moving all around. So again, all through here is involved when you clench, right? Remember, so it's crossing this joint, so everything here is crossing over and is involved in what's happening right here. Since I work untying the knot, I've worked through here. Now I'm up here, coming down. And I'm putting like a medium firm kind of pressure. And now I go all around her eyes. Again, there's all of these nerves that run through here. We have that trigeminal nerve, facial nerves, right? Um, you want to make sure that there's no entrapments. 
or if there are that you're starting to address them. This all takes some time. And you know, while um, she will feel significant improvement after this session, she's thumbing up if you can see it. She's like, yes, I am. You can talk, by the way, Yvonne, if you want to. <laughs> she's like, no, I want to sit here and enjoy this session. Exactly. And I'm actually <laughs> listening because it's really interesting. I know, right? I love nerding out. I feel like um, I do like massage for nerds. <laughs> If you like information, if you like documentaries, you'll love the way I give a TMJ massage. <laughs> um, all right, so now I'm going in and there's all of these muscles through the face that, you know, um, one of the, the cool things is anybody in robotics who's ever tried to like mimic facial gestures, they really understand, you know, how many muscles go into moving your face. Um, and that includes chewing, smiling, frowning, clenching your eyes, you know, whatever it is, making, you know, that gesture where you're like, mm, I'm not sure I believe what you're saying. So um, I just come up, I'm pressing up in, really into her cheekbones, right? All those orbital bones there. And now I'll drag all the way up. So I'm gonna cross this fissure here and up into the head. Again, you know, we're, we're completing the muscle, right? We're not just stopping here where the vascular muscle stops. We're actually going through that whole system that creates movement. And now I'm gonna go underneath. So there's this muscle, <clears throat> it's called your platysma. It actually comes uh, all the way from here and just follows the course of my fingers up and over. Yvonne's looking down at our cameraman extraordinaire. He's like, let me get this shot. So um, this platysma gets really, really tight. Sometimes when you're like, oh, what is that? Why does this feel so tight under here? Um, it's actually a muscle and you can massage it. It can get tight, a whole bunch of stuff, but it comes up over the jaw. And so again, it's something that is um, a part of the TMJ. It's a very broad, very thin muscle. Um, it, like sometimes when you see people and they start to have like these lines that kind of come up through here, uh, that's actually their platysma, either, you know, just getting old, starting to fail. So massaging it, exercising it will help to keep you looking young, which is just a really nice, uh, added benefit, I think, to these sessions. One of the cool things about TMJ is when you start to release the muscle, you can see that people's faces change. They become slimmer. Um, you can use Botox for TMJ. Uh, I actually recommended that Yvonne do Botox because her masseter was so tight. So she does Botox and then also does this to help maintain. Um, one of the things about Botox is it really only gets the masseter. And if you have an overactive pterygoid, which are some muscles, you can think of them like rubber bands in your mouth, opening and closing your jaw, kind of on the inside, little rubber bands like right here. Um, if those are overactive, which in many, many people with TMJ it is, the Botox will only help so much and in some cases, Botox will make it feel worse if it's not your masseter that's the issue, if it's the pterygoids that are the issue. All right, so now here I am. I'm going on to where the sternocleidomastoid um, and like scalene anterior, um, and you also have like some other, you know, uh, muscles here that aren't as involved, but these are the, the, the major ones, right? So sternocleidomastoid, scalene anterior. Um, they start to attach, and this can feel so good. Um, this is a really, really tight area for a lot of people with TMJ. Um, again, if this is something that you're interested in learning how to do on your own, there are some great little quick videos. And if you 
want some in-depth guidance through how to work this area, consider taking our course. Pretty awesome. Where can you take a course? At rx3.me. Go ahead and check it out. Can you talk about that? I'm gonna add it on the side. Oh, okay, sure. So our course is a self-massage course. We utilize some custom tools for your area um, that actually really help to get into spaces like this. It'll feel so different than your fingers. And um, it's a pretty extensive course that you can utilize anywhere at any time to help relieve jaw pain from clenching, grinding, stress. And it is uh, developed by yours truly. <laughs> um, and it really is a, a work of about a decade. So um, if you think that the things that we're doing here are helpful or you just want to know more, go to rx3.me and check it out. All right, so now I'm just going to the other side. Now I find that her right side is super tight. And I'm going to spend a bit of time here. You'll also notice that I'll put her into a different position in her head. Um, again, this is to shorten those muscles so that I just get a little bit of slack around the area. Um, if you're in the New York metro area, you're interested in getting TMJ by me. I do have a wait list, but we do take people's names on the wait list. If you'd like to come in and get one, feel free again on rx3.me to sign up and we'll reach out when we have availability for new clients. I love this. I love doing it. Um, it comes with a real customized session. We do a lot of intake, um, so I get a nice deep history and it's kind of like a little project. I like to think of it like Sherlock homing the area. <laughs> Yvonne has been through that process with me a number of times for a lot of different things. <laughs> I always enjoy it. <laughs> You're always like, okay, but now we have to figure this out. <laughs> and I'm like, give it to me. I want it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. So now I'm just going to kind of bring it over again. We're shortening and stretching. One of the things that I think make it really effective are, are the way that I position my fingers. Um, I call it my hooked method. And if you're interested in learning more about that, let me know, check out our videos. I go over that. A lot of people kind of do this thing. And while that feels nice, it's not nearly as effective. Okay. So we've softened up to a degree. Now I'm looking for the border of the masseter. So you'll see that I'm kind of pushing back in to her face and I'm looking for, so on this side, I'm really feeling a lot of Mm. resistance and not a ton of give. So I know that I need to go in there. So as I go kind of past the masseter, I'm feeling that lateral pterygoid here, and that's really what I need to get into. So that'll be inside of her mouth. So I'll talk, talk that through, but really the inside of the mouth is something that it's hard to see. It looks a little bit weird from the outside, but my goodness, does it feel good when it's tight. All right, so I'm gonna put some gloves on and let's go intraoral. All right, so here we go. We are going what's called intraorally. Um, so that just means I'm going to take my gloved hand <laughs> and work on the muscles that are inside of the mouth. Um, so if you open your mouth, and you feel with your tongue or you feel with your fingers, there's all these muscles kind of behind all of your molars and on the inside of your cheek that you just can't get to any other way. 
and is a huge, huge uh, ignored part of TMJ. So I don't ignore those areas and let's go ahead. So um, Ivana, if you'll just open your mouth for me, I'm just gonna sweep my finger to the side and we'll begin. So I just start here kind of right at the front and I'm just starting to massage. Um, and I do this kind of like a little pressing, right? Like I'm squeezing back and forth. So just open your, relax your jaw. Um, a lot of people, they want to help. They start opening or closing. And then what I'm looking for are these little kind of rubber band type feeling muscles. They're called your pterygoids. And I start to just go back and forth. So if you'll just open your jaw for me as wide as you can and relax. And so I have her open up because that actually opens up the joint, stretches the muscle. And so that way when she closes her mouth, I can get a little bit further down and it's a lot easier than if I were to just try to like force my way over there. <laughs> so when you have a TMJ, no matter how much massage you do through your jaw, through your temporalis, uh, you're not gonna get complete relief until these muscles are addressed. So they're really hard because there are a ton of nerves in there. Um, one of the cool things about uh, the course that we have is that we have tools with silicone heads. So you can't actually damage or injure those nerves mm. that are back there. Uh, I've had clients who kind of overdo it. They start using their fingers or they start using, you know, I don't know, they've used pens and all sorts of stuff uh, to get back there. And some people have used chopsticks, all sorts of things. And uh, then they're like, oh, like part of my jaw temporarily went numb. And I was like, yeah, didn't you do that one time, I think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what did mm -hmm. you use to do that? Just my fingers. Just your fingers, yeah. So, you know, what's cool is the tools that we have, these silicone tips um, are really meant to prevent a lot of that from happening. And open for me again. We're going to go into that medial pterygoid and relax. All right. Mm -hmm. So the thing about this is that it really is... Um, so the mandible, this jawbone here, comes up and hooks in like a little fork and it comes through here and there is one, the lateral, meaning, you know, uh, to the edge, uh, to the outside of the body, medial meaning more toward the midline of the body. And that medial is actually on the inside of the jaw. So I'm going behind the jaw, but in front of her back molars. And for people that have TMJ, this is just, it feels crazy the first time you get it done, but my goodness, it feels incredible um, when it's released. It's just total relief mm -hmm. and you can move your jaw a bunch more. So um, because hers feels really tight today, I'm just gonna do just these little uh, spaces, but there's a lot of exercises that can be done during that compression, kind of like how I moved her neck back and forth. Um, I can also do that with the jaw. So I was just talking to Yvonne off camera here about when was the last time that we really did this. And, um, you know, because of COVID, this is something that so many people would come into my office and have done, but because of the nature of it, it's something that we had to pause on. And um, I'm so excited to be able to do a self-care video for it because there's so many people who, you know, we were treating who we can't work on right now. Um, so it's a nice, safe and effective way to, to treat it yourself. And open again for me and relax. So um, in the self-care course, you know, because you really can't see what I'm doing, we actually have uh, our skeleton. His name is Rex. If you ever email us, our email is rex at rx3.me, <laughs> and you're essentially emailing our TMJ skeleton head. <laughs> He's very friendly, though. All right, and gently open. I'm just going to sweep my finger up and out of your mouth. And just open and close your jaw. Feel the difference. Wow. Yeah, right? 
I can open my jaw more on this side than that side, but you can't see that because <laughs> I can't actually physically do that. Yeah. But it feels like I can open the right yeah. jaw more open than the, the, the left. What's also kind of cool, um, and you can see overhead, that you can just see that her, her actual face looks different. So you'll see that this cheek is a little bit more lifted. So I'm asymmetrical right now. Right, right now you are, but we're going to fix that. We're going to go to the other side. Um, Okay, here we go. All right, so if you'll just open for me, I'm gonna sweep my finger to the side of your mouth. And again, we're gonna just start up here. I know this side feels a lot tighter to me. We're gonna go a little bit slow. Just take time and try to relax your jaw for me. Yeah, there you go. Ooh. You know it's bad when I start singing. <laughs> Whenever I feel a muscle that's just so tired and just worn out, I'm always like, ooh. <laughs> wow. Yeah. All right, so I'm just gonna relax your jaw there. Yeah, all right. Oof. Ooh. So you can actually get something called capsulitis um, where the actual so every, every joint, you have cartilage, right? Mm -hmm. That lubricates the end of it. And when it's really overused or um, just a little dysfunctional, that cartilage can get inflamed. And it feels like you have a little bit of that, just a smidge of that on this side. Um, yeah. All right, so I'm just gonna go in from the outside. So what I'm doing is I'm actually pressing against my finger. Um, I really like to do a lot of compression from the outside. Otherwise, sometimes it feels like you're like just out loose, kind of stretching out someone's cheek. Ugh. I know, oh, all right, let me back up a little. And we'll just take it slow. So crying is not like she's in tears because it's so painful. Um, <laughs> It's, <laughs> it's actually um, because of where the mm -hmm. mandible uh, sits through the temporalis, um, it can actually just create tears from your tear duct um, because of the, the pressure and the nerves that are affected. And that's when you know, you know, it's been a while and uh, yeah. So all I'm doing is just kind of going back and forth here. Um, And so I like to say, you can never go too deep. You can only go too fast. So it's my job to really gently soften this tissue. And it just means that it's gonna take a little bit more time. So I'm going from the outside of that lateral pterygoid and I'm pushing inward. So it's just like a little movement this way from here in. And that's to release. And then open all the way, Yvonne as far as you can and relax for me back down yeah you got it good I'm just gonna hang out right in there right. and again if there were if there was anything that I could do you know if this was a little bit further into the sessions I could do some manipulations with her moving her jaw around, which are really beneficial. But this is kind of a starting baseline. Oh, there we go. It's starting to release a little bit here. Yeah. This, this is a couple sessions here that's going to open, open, open all the way. There you go. And relax. There you go. Good. Awesome. Oh. We're getting there. We're getting there. You can feel the difference, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Still hurts, still. Yeah. And open for me slightly and relax. Ooh, oh. that medial pterygoid is popping so tight. I'm singing a song to help it relax. <laughs> I 
I hope it works. Me too. And so all I'm doing now is I'm on the inside of her jawbone and I'm pressing down and toward me. So just to help to stretch that tissue on the inside of her mouth. So I'm on the front of her um, upper molars and then I'm kind of pressing down and back into the mandible. And I'm just kind of giving her a little bit of support here. I'm not pressing, I'm just giving her some support. And then we're just gonna gently, and open slightly for me. Go ahead, there you go, good. And then we're just going back and forth, just kind of sweeping gently. All right, and we're gonna come back out. And so then I start over again. And the reason that I start over um, when it's super, super tight is to just remind the area, hey, all of these muscles have already been worked on. Mm -hmm. Let's feel the difference. One of the cool things is you can, um, I like to use psychology. Um, the brain has certain ways of operating that I kind of think are cool. So when the brain recognizes that change has occurred, that change will last longer. So by like retesting something, so for example, when she opens and closes her mouth, if uh, there has been a change and our brain recognizes that, then um, the body will adjust and keep that hold for some time. If the brain doesn't recognize that change has occurred, um, it'll last less time. So I like to have it work for me. <laughs> and um, you can do that for yourself, really on every, on kind of anything in your life, which I kind of think is cool. The observer, okay. And yeah, open and relax for me. There we go, I'm just gonna hang there. I'm not gonna do anything, you can just relax. Whatever feels good for you right now, Yvonne. There we go. I'm just gonna hang there, I'm not gonna move. And so anything that you wanna do or move around, feel free. Whatever feels good for you. You notice that she moves her shoulders, um, and as she does, I can feel that movement in her jaw. They really are connected. Okay. Yeah. Ah, nice relax. I like that. That was good. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to just gently, ooh. Oh, you have a little. I felt that. Yeah. The last bit of give. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Still clicking, but much less. Yeah, yeah much. The, that got a little bit more tense. Yeah, because I, you know, it was painful. Yeah, that was that was intense. Resist. Yeah. So then sometimes you tense the muscles during the session. Yeah. And that's why you're coming back there. Right. That's why I'm going there. Um, so what I really love is as I come back in and I work um, again through these these tissues. I just kind of do a brief overview. I remind her whole um, structure here, right? This whole system mm. that open and closes her jaw, all of the stuff that I've done. Um, and what's cool is I feel a huge difference through her neck, through her pecs, even through her traps. I'll come up into her suboccipital lobes. Just give a moment there. This is a very soothing, relaxing position. And I'm just pressing up, giving some traction to the spine, dropping around. And so this is really for me to, um, for her it feels awesome. <laughs> for me it is to really start to feel, hey, what has changed? What has stayed the same? What do I want to adjust and address next time? You know, giving her some really specific details about 
what I want to work on and what she can do at home. All right. Cool. Well, Yvonne, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much. We have so much more to do, particularly on this left side. But again, I'm so glad um, that you feel more balanced. It's easier for you to open and close your jaw. Yeah. And there's, oh, look at that. That was actually awesome. <laughs> and a lot less clicking. So that's One for the camera. I, 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 I. <laughs> All right. 